You can say what you like about clichés, but they get the job done, don't they? What do you think about Germans? Far be it for me to say. But not for this man. Rolf Sachs is a half-German, half-French artist and designer who feels it's high time we asked just what is typically German or typisch Deutsch. There are certain very clear clichés, yeah, which uh, obviously are part of the show. Punctuality, industriousness, hard-working, being cleanliness. But I wanted to show the full depth of really, you know, the German character. And I think there's a very important uh, thing that we always say that we are the nation of uh, poets and thinkers, yeah? And there is always uh, this tor being torn between the mind and the rationality. Yeah, we stand here in front of uh, this piece, which also shows, represents this uh, a little bit. Sehnsucht, yearning, asks what is more important in Germans, the head or the heart, and guess what? Yeah, the brain is a little heavier because probably in German culture the rationality is a little stronger than the emotional. And there I think the German mind is much deeper and much wider than probably a lot of other cultures really realize. The perception might be changing, but Sachs is using some hoary old notions, on purpose of course, to challenge Germans and what people think of Germans, to gauge the change. Oh look, some notorious German Amtsschimmel, red tape. It's of course about bureaucracy, and uh, Amtsschimmel means a little bit that uh, the bureaucracy and there's a little mold growing over it, yeah, and it has a sort of inner life. And then I did uh, all these stamps with all kind of different, very, very German work. There's uh, words, the skilled worker, reformation, schadenfreude, uh, being very tidy, uh, uh, sort of uh, saving quite a, uh, a lot, being immaculate, yeah, and uh, some quite fun things like Himmel, Arsch und Zwirn, which I can't translate, but every German has a good smile on his face when he reads it. Once you've been stamped at the door, you're ready to explore the two floors of Cologne's Museum of Applied Arts. MAC, devoted to decoding Germany's down-to-earth nature, its occasional fetishism of cleanliness and order, its pride in intellect and punctuality, its melancholia and romanticism too. Sachs has a deft hand at turning an idea into an artefact with a generous helping, typisch Deutsch, of arched eyebrow. Yeah, this is a sort of surreal uh, walking stick. The Wanderlust comes from the 19th century, before the car actually existed. And there was a big movement here that young people would uh, have like uh, clubs, associations, and they would wander around and uh, discover their country, discover new peaks, yeah, and uh, so on. And uh, at the time, it was also a big tradition in Germany. Everybody had their walking stick, and you could buy these little badges in all the little villages which you reached. I transcended them here a little bit and uh, took now German holiday uh, destinations. So you have now Phuket and Mallorca and also New York and South America. Yeah, because that is really the new peaks of the 20th century. Nice idea, isn't it? You know those Stabellen chairs, don't you? Carved with a heart in the back. But what happens when they get mixed up with the sharpshooters from a Bavarian rifle club? I had actually a shooting group of, a, of my hunting home in Bavaria shoot out the heart in the back. Each village in Germany has a shooting club. It is sort of part of the, the tradition which is actually a very nice, uh, nice thing. So far, so witty. Typisch Deutsch doesn't shy away from history, however. Guns aren't just for sport, are they? I made a piece, Memento Mori, yeah, which of course uh, reminds us of the First and the Second World War, which are dark chapters which we should never forget, yeah, and uh, which are obviously part also of our history. Contemporary Germany remembers not to forget, which is why a public gallery in one of its major cities is holding up a mirror to itself, its patrons, the nation in which it sits. Sometimes it's one of those comically distorting circus mirrors, but a mirror nonetheless. 
Sax, half artist, half designer, might struggle to define himself as either if it weren't for the clarity of the ideas and works here. With or without his mad scientist spectacles, Rolf Sax is clear-sighted, though. I take an object, you know, I think about the word and then how could I symbolize it and then, you know, I try to put something uh, together so that it, it has, it shows the object but in a different light, with a little twinkle in the eye, with a little extra, yeah, just to give it that extra touch. All things considered, we might say that this is a very considered show. It's set out to define something and has methodically achieved that aim. Remind you of anyone? But it's also very engaged, it shows a sense of vulnerability and is very funny. It's lustig. And there you might be surprised, but you shouldn't be. Sturm und Drang is so 19th century. This is typisch Deutsch. For Monocle in Cologne, I'm Robert Bound.